And it's actually a great segue we were talking about before because we're going to see a deck here, a Ruby Fossa deck, a Red Fossa deck, which ah. um, also wasn't well positioned, I think, in previous challenges because of Green Steel's popularity. And it's another deck that I think we're going to see do well today um, that has Helene kind of opened up to it given the unique nature of this meta. Absolutely. So um, Matthew over here on the right, player two, he's playing that that Ruby Amber Mufasa deck like you're just saying. And then Melissa Morgan, our player one here on the left, is playing a Ruby Amethyst, which we know we're just going to see a lot of. Um, but I have to be honest, I know some people, you know, throw some shade at this deck, but I love it. I, <laughs> I enjoy this deck so much, and we've just seen how strong that this deck can be. It, it is consistent. Um, you're, you're always going to see it, and uh, it's got so much card draw as well, and we're going to see the players alter their hands here. Uh, I do have to note, I don't, I don't know if we mentioned it or not, but we are coming to game two, Melissa having won game one. Yes. Um, and so we'll see now if Matthew can uh, take game two or if Melissa's going to take all seven points coming out of this match. Yeah, that's the interesting thing with the points is that uh, if a player walks away with one game, win each, you get three points, but if you win both games, you actually get a bonus point. So it's three points for each game you one and then that bonus point giving you seven points so this being round three that does tell us something a little bit about these players because they each have 10 points which means they both have had a, a draw and a full you know two zero win and so both sitting with 10 points here yeah, and that bonus point can can make a huge difference. It uh, really can. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, will sit on that bubble. It can make a difference between getting one of those promo cards. It can make a difference between whether you make it to day two or not. And also it makes a difference just in your overall ranking uh, because on day Day two, your um, the person who goes first is based on your, the higher rank. Yeah, so uh, Matthew here playing a Milan Injured Soldier. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about with this Ruby Fossa deck is it got a lot of new tools in Ursula's Return that that made the deck do what it wants to do just better. Mm. Um, one of them is Mulan Injured Soldier, which is a card that comes into play with damage counters on it, similar to Mother Gothel that we saw in earlier sets. That's Rapunzel's friend right there. It is Rapunzel's <laughs> friend. Or uh, Julieta, another card that we uh, got yes. in Ursula's Return. Julieta. 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 Um, which, uh, <laughs> gosh, which um, is another Another card that does something similar to Rapunzel, where you heal a character and get to draw a card for damage healed. And so this was always a combination that this deck liked to set up in turns three and four, uh, is healing that damage, having a well-statted character on the board, and then drawing some cards, which set you up for the mid-game. And in Ursula's Return, we got a couple cards, uh, as we're seeing here, which, which do that uh, as well. So it made the deck more consistent in that regard. Um, but again, you know, even though this deck got more tools, uh, oh, and we have a Frenemy coming on the board, uh, Frenemy will not uh, be activated uh, because of that state. Yeah. Um, but it was held back. And so it's interesting to see this deck now able to do what it wants to do. And we're going to see if this deck manages to overpower this old, reliable Ruby Amethyst here in this game. Yeah, Ruby Amethyst really is old, reliable, very consistent. Um, we did see Chernobog's followers um, get bounced back to hand with that Madame Man Snake on last turn. And we see a frenemy in Melissa's hand as well. Uh, but I'm not sure if she would put that down here. We ha oh, we have Sisu coming down. I just really love this Sisu. Such a good card. Yeah, it is funny to see this uh, f script flipped here because we're used to this whole last set seeing Frenemy as the combo, this Frenemy Sisu mm -hmm. combo that the Ruby Amethyst player wants to, to start out with to try to drive that lower total early and force their opponent to respond. But here, the Ruby Fossa player, uh, Matthew, is flipping the script a little bit and putting that, that Frenemy on the board. Um, oh, so uh, I think I'm looking at Melissa's hand here really closely, and I think... On the far left, I think she might have a big Sisu, a shift Sisu. Um, so that might be why she wanted to get that Sisu on the board here, was so that she's able to to shift that larger Sisu, um, which is such a great card. I I love the Floodborne Sisu. So it be it does shift on six. So we're a little bit of a ways away. So hopefully that little Sisu can can last until then. Mm, definitely a fun card. Definitely a card that you, Matthew knows is there, and so has to think about. Um, Luckily for him, there's a lot of cards in Matthew's deck that are above that two strength threshold, uh, and so uh, not a lot to manipulate strength in Melissa's deck. So um, not one that's going to do a ton of work, but definitely, definitely threatening. 
Um, Matthew here, you know, setting up uh, for a powerful heal this turn if he has the Rapunzel, able to draw three cards off that Mother Gothel. Um, and that's really what Matthew wants to do this game is, is perhaps threaten with the frenemy, but um, get that Rapunzel on turn four if possible, draw those three cards and set himself up for the mid game. I know earlier we saw, and we're here, we're seeing again uh, that Maleficent dragon going into the inkwell. Uh, is that a card that will always be found in a Mufasa deck, or is that kind of a card that gets teched in here and there? It, I think it gets teched in here and there. We see it played sometimes. The biggest reason it's in here is as a uh, card that you see off the top of the deck to move for Mufasa, Betrayed Leader. Mm -hmm. uh, Mufasa is one of the cards that this deck, is, it's one of this deck's namesake. We call it <laughs> Ruby Fasa because of Mufasa. This is a card that Matthew is really hoping to see here uh, on turn five or later. Yeah. It's a card that when it is banished, uh, you get to look at the top card of your deck, and if it is a character, you get to put it into play for free. And any card that has an enter play trigger, uh, you will get that trigger off the top of your deck. And so getting to flip a nine cost Maleficent into play and then immediately banish an opponent's character feels pretty <laughs> good. Pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. But here we have two frenemies on the board now. Um, so Matthew with uh, will get six lore if he's able to put a high strength character in the game or perhaps remove that Sisu. That Sisu right now preventing you know frenemy from going off. Uh, get a little Madame Mim bounce here on that rabbit. Now, I can't see how many cards are in Matthew's hand, but I think that's going to make the difference here because that Sisu, of course, has strength equal or gets plus one strength for each card in Matthew's hand. Uh, but I'm not sure if uh, Flynn is going to trigger here. I think not. No, that Sisu is just way too powerful right yeah. now. Um, he does have quite a few cards there in hand. Uh, Four cards in hand, I think. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so Sisu is uh, sitting there with five strength. So, oh my goodness. Wow, oh this frenemy running away. Now, this oh dear, is oh dear. this is going to be interesting to see if Matthew can get, I was going to say, either get another character on board that has a strength or taking care of banishing that Sisu, which he's able to do with that brawl. What an, what an interesting board state here. This is, this is fascinating. Interesting. Matt, uh, interesting. <laughs> in, in, interesting. Um, <laughs> I, should, I should be punished for, for that one. Um, so it's, it's a really interesting board state. I, I think Matthew is definitely not on his game plan here. Uh, we would have loved to see Rapunzel there. I yeah. think sending that Mother Gothel into the snake was an indication that we didn't have, was clearly an indication that we didn't have the Rapunzel, which would have healed uh, Mother Gothel and kept her alive uh, instead of uh, trade there. So Matthew right now is setting up for a big turn if he can draw into a high strength character or somehow remove that fox. But um, it's uh, yeah. it, he's definitely not on his, his ideal line. Whereas Melissa... Um, yes, she didn't do the early game uh, frenemy aggressive line that you like to see, but um, one of the keys for this Ruby Amethyst deck that we've talked about in previous matches is getting your rabbits going in the mid game to draw you cards to get to the end game state that you want. Draw you into perhaps a be prepared with a couple castles or have the goats and the bounces, have the removal that you need. Um, and uh, her able to get that rabbit online tells me that she's she's kind of doing what she wants to do here um, and is definitely um, in a better position than Matthew is. Yeah, the the bouncing rabbits is really great. Uh, she does have another Madame Mim in hand as well, which is going to be, again, great for that bouncing mechanic, which is just a fun mechanic. I know we've talked about it at previous challenges, but for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Merlin and Madame Mim are from Sword in the Stone, and in that movie, there's this wizard duel that happens where they go back and forth and they transform into different animals. I think there's 15 different animals they transform into uh, over the course of the duel, and I just love how they brought that theme in from the movie and these characters into the way that the cards are mechanically functioning here with that bouncing effect back and forth. It's really interesting, really fun, and very effective in the gameplay. Yeah, one of the things that I think uh, most players like to do in any game that they're playing, whether it's a TCG or otherwise, is you, you want to feel like you're telling a story. That's why the <laughs> flavor of the game that matters. Yeah. And getting to play this wizard duel is just, as you said, it's a ton of fun. Yes, and there's Julieta Madrigal, of course, from Encanto. Like you said, healing up that Mulan, getting to draw a card off of that healing. 
Yeah, and I think Matthew here is is just trying to draw cards, looking for... Uh, a Mufasa, maybe? A Mufasa, perhaps. <laughs> um, would love to see that. Mufasa is a card, you know, that can swing games. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you quest with it for two every turn, and if you're able to drive your lure a little bit and your opponent's forced to remove it, you can flip a, a Chernabog, you can flip a, yeah. a Maleficent monstrous dragon off the top of your deck, and so it's one of the things that makes this deck go, um, and he'd really love to see one here, I think. Yeah. See, Melissa has, I think maybe she has two goats in hand. She has a brawl. She has that big Sisu that we talked about. Um, because we don't have that little Sisu on the board, she can't shift it anymore. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see here what she decides to do. Any thoughts on uh, some oh, brawl? We're going to brawl something? What are we going to brawl here? One of those Flynn's? Let's see. I mean, we are... So you mentioned the Sisu. Um, we have a lot of two strength or below characters on Matthew's side of the board. So Melissa knows uh, turn eight. Uh, we're getting pretty close. I think we haven't inked this There's turn, I don't think. And so I think we're up to seven ink this turn. Um, Bringing let's see. a goat down. There's a goat. Down a goat. Uh, for one lore. But uh, so we're, we're getting closer and closer to turn eight where that is going to be able to come down and clear Matthew's board. Um, and then Melissa will be fully in control. So she's not super concerned right now about what's going on over there. Um, able to continue to, you know, pursue her game plan, draw some cards, get some more characters on the board. Um, and, and has the lore lead, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, she does. Uh, that Sisu, what's interesting, I don't know if you remember this from the last challenge in Fort Worth, that um, the championship, but the champion from that, Ed Chu, he, that Sisu was really what clinched him the win in, in the final match. So we have we've have seen how powerful that Sisu can be. Yeah, absolutely. So Melissa thinking about her, her lines here. You know, un unfortunately for Matthew, I mean, a lot of this deck's card draw, the biggest card draw on this deck comes from the, you know, Rapunzel mm -hmm. combo. And, and not being able to set that up really kind of sets you back. We put a lot of characters on the board, a lot of resources, and I can't see his hand size, but he probably doesn't have terribly many options right now. Um, no, I think he just two. has two cards in yeah. hand, which is not great for Matthew. Yeah, unfortunately, he hasn't found that Rapunzel, which, like you said, it's that healing... Um, you know, with Julieta and Rapunzel, and he just hasn't been able to draw those cards. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there, there are, as you suggested before, oh, there's plenty of ways Mulan. back in this game. Mulan is a, is a fun card, a card that can do a lot of damage. Um, we would have loved to have that, that shift target out there for her, but unfortunately that's been removed. Um, and, yeah, so Melissa at this point, again, fully in the driver's seat here, um, able to use rabbits and other card draw to keep her hand size strong and uh, is just tr thinking about how to close out this game without giving Matthew uh, an opening to get back in. Yeah, she did draw a Be Prepared, but I think, you know, if she's able to get that Sisu down, take care of Matthew's side of the board and keep her characters on board to continue questing might be a good option for her here. Thinking through these lines. Yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, no, no. <laughs> we're just waiting to see what Melissa's going to decide to do. Lot, uh, yeah, she does have a lot of options. She has five cards in hand, and there's the Sisu. So we do clean up Matthew's side of the board. Uh, really, really puts Melissa in a great position here. She is ahead on lore, leading with seven. And, yeah, Matthew just unfortunately not able to find the, the Mufasa that he would like to see. Yeah, no, this, this is, a, this is a, quite a spot to be in. Um, we do have the Maui coming down, clearing off that goat, uh, getting a, a lure from Melissa in the process. But, I mean, Sisu, just a fantastic card. Not, able, not only cleaning up the board here, but then able to quest for three lore I love it. Uh, on the back end. <laughs> um, and so Matthew's going to have to respond to that. But, again, Melissa just has a lot of cards, a lot of answers. I think we, we have another rabbit there to continue mm -hmm. that card draw engine. And Matthew, you know, there, there are some high-cost characters which will allow him to gain control of the board. We mentioned Maleficent, which he can play on turn nine. Um, is we saw that Milan go into the inkwell, so an that's option. another card that the he Milan may is have. An option. Mm -hmm. This deck often runs Chernabogs, which gets cheaper for the characters that you have in your discard pile, which are, there's quite a few there Quite now. a few, yes. Um, but again, huh. it's, it's, Melissa just has so many uh, cards, and she's going to draw more with that rabbit. Um, it's uh, definitely uh, hard to dig back from this spot. Yeah, now uh, she's at 12 lore. Next turn, she would quest for five, putting her up to 17. So Matthew really needing to find some answers here. Otherwise, he's looking at two turns, and this game is going to be done. Mm -hmm. And there's just there's not, not a ton of answers for this board state. 
What answers do you think Matthew might be looking for in this situation? There's, there's not a ton. I mean, of course, a be prepared in Ruby is always an option. But, you know, Ruby Fossa is so character-centric that you don't mm-hmm. always see it run. Uh, sometimes you do because you can be prepared. Your Mufasa goes to the discard pile and you can flip something and immediately be in control of the board. So that's something you might like to see. Um, cards like Mana Medusa, though, can't choose the Sisu. And so that's, that's also not an option. At this point... Um, oh, another think- goat. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, I think that that might spell the end here for Matthew. Him, I think him really just not being able to find that Rapunzel. We got and there. We got the fist pump. Matthew says that that game is yours, Melissa. Congrats to 